let's dive into the case. As I examine this angiogram of the lower limbs, the first thing that catches my attention is the filling defect in the left popliteal artery when the foot is in a flexed position. This finding immediately suggests popliteal artery entrapment syndrome, especially considering that the defect is absent when the foot is in a neutral position. This dynamic stenosis with medial deviation of the vessel seen on the flexion image is pretty classic for this condition. It's also worth noting that there's no significant abnormality in the distal runoff vessels, which helps rule out other potential causes of claudication, like peripheral arterial disease or embolic phenomena. Given these findings, my leading diagnosis is popliteal artery entrapment syndrome. The dynamic nature of the stenosis in a young patient with calf claudication makes this the most likely diagnosis. Atherosclerosis or arterial thrombosis seem less likely, as those conditions would typically present with more widespread vascular involvement and less dramatic changes with positional variation. To confirm this diagnosis, I would recommend an MRI to get a better look at the soft tissues around the popliteal artery. This could help identify the specific cause of the entrapment, whether it's due to an aberrant muscle slip or fibrous band. Additionally, a duplex ultrasound might be helpful to assess the hemodynamics more precisely. In terms of management, this patient would likely need to be referred for a surgical consultation. Depending on the severity and impact on the patient's lifestyle, options could range from conservative management to surgical decompression or vascular reconstruction to prevent long-term complications like chronic limb ischemia. Anticipated examiner questions. Why did you rule out atherosclerosis in this case? I would explain that atherosclerosis typically causes fixed stenoses rather than dynamic ones and usually affects older patients. In this young athletic individual with a dynamic stenosis that changes with foot position, atherosclerosis is less likely. What are the risks if this condition is left untreated? Without treatment, there's a risk of chronic ischemia leading to muscle damage, pain, and potentially a decrease in the patient's mobility. Over time, this could significantly impact the patient's quality of life and might even lead to more serious complications like tissue necrosis. How do you differentiate between the different types of popliteal artery entrapment syndrome? The types are based on the anatomical relationship between the artery and surrounding structures. Type 1 involves an abnormal course of the artery, while type 2 through type 6 involve varying degrees of muscle or fibrous band involvement. An MRI would be essential to identify the exact type by visualizing these relationships. By approaching the case in this manner, I'm confident in not only diagnosing the condition, but also anticipating the logical next steps for management and treatment.